Kia ora and welcome back. So in this video we're going to take another look at vectors. We are quite used to working with the components of the vectors, those are the two numbers that were in our brackets. And we mentioned that we, vectors are always specified by a magnitude and an angle as an alternative way of describing them. And we're just going to explore how you go backwards and forwards but between those representations and also how we describe angles for vectors now that we've got some trig under our belt. So vectors, um, if a vector has a magnitude of f in it, so often when we have a vector we notate the vector using a bold letter for the vector and the length of it we'll often notate using just that same letter but not bold. Um, and again if I'm handwriting this instead of doing it bold I'd be underlining, so I'd be writing this here. Especially when we work with forces, it's quite convenient um, to have the magnitude being the letter by itself and the vector version of it, the whole thing, um, being the underlined or bold thing. Angle theta, well that's just, as we talked about in our trig video, it's going to be the angle from your x-axis. So what we're picturing here is some axes, x and y, the vector, we know it's just an arrow, that's how we've described it. Let's just draw it for now, starting from the origin. So here's our vector. And when we talk about the angle of a vector, it's specified as the angle anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis. And just like in the trig video, it could be a negative number going clockwise from the axis as well, if we like. So if we do that, then the magnitude of this vector, the length of the arrow, is just equal to f. Okay, so we've noted that down, that's the magnitude. And just using a little bit of trigonometry, we can see that the x component is just going to be cosine theta, but the hypotenuse here is not 1 anymore, it's got length of f, so we need to scale it by f. So the key takeaway here is that the, f, the x component, which we sometimes write as fx, is going to be f times cosine of theta and the y component is going to be f times sine of theta okay because the y is the vertical the x is the horizontal and then those are the two numbers that go in our vector so if we were to write it in that vector notation that we're used to we could also write this as f cosine theta times f sine theta or if you like, you could even put the f out the front. But normally we'd just write it in that first way here. This one. So that's our vector. Um, so when we've got the angle and the magnitude, we can get those two components um, by just taking cosine and sine at the angle and multiplying them by the magnitude. What if we want to go the other way? Well, um, if we've got a vector, so again, let's draw a little picture. And we know the two components, but let's say we don't this time know the angle. So we've got, here's our vector. And we've got fx, so that will be this number here. And fy, that will be this number here. But we don't now know the magnitude or the angle. How do we find these? Well, we know how to do the magnitude. We did this already in an earlier video where we basically took the two components, squared them, and took the square root. So the magnitude of our vector f we can get just by using Pythagoras which works out to be this formula which always works. Square the two sides, anything negative will be squared and become positive and add those together, take the square root, that's your magnitude. Okay but how do we get the angle? Well here's the angle theta that we want. Um, basically what we want to do is we want to take fy and fx, they are the two sides of our triangle. So we can find this angle by essentially doing some trig on it. So our triangle would be fx, fy, theta. And we know that tan theta, that's our opposite over adjacent, is fy over fx. And so our theta is going to be tan inverse of that fy over fx. Okay, now remember from our trig video that inverse tan only gives us a number on your calculator between 
negative 90 degrees and 90 degrees. So inverse tan is going to give us the wrong thing if our vector was pointing this way because it's literally only going to give us an angle somewhere in this range. So the way that we can fix this is basically just to look at this x component and we can see that if our x component is negative that's going to put us on this side of the picture. That's where we know we've got to use the other value that gives us that same inverse tan. So that means to get the, the correct angle if our x component is negative, we just add on 180 degrees and that will give us the correct angle. So finding the angle is a little bit tricky because we do need to make a decision based on whether our x component is greater than or equal to zero or whether it's negative. Okay, so this is probably all best brought together in a single example that kind of does a lot of this in one go. So let's try um, adding together two vectors. So vector addition, same as it has been in the past. The vector A has a magnitude of 4 and an angle of 30 degrees. So let's draw this on. Okay, so it's got a magnitude of 4. I'm, I'm not actually even going to attempt to match the scale here. I'm just going to draw. Um, 30 degrees, that's about like that. So it's going to be something like this. Ignore the squares. They're just, they're just a guess. So this is 30, uh, 30 degrees and length of 4. That's A. Notice our handwriting underlined, typed, bold. That's our vector A. And vector, vector B has a magnitude of 5 and is in, at an angle of a hun negative 135 degrees. Okay, that's um a bit awkward. So <laughs> magnitude of 5, so that's going to be a bit longer than that one. Negative 135 degrees. Well, negative 90 is straight down, going a further 45 around so my b is going to look something like this 45 degrees kind of that way and it's going to be a bit longer a bit awkward but hey that's where the negative 135 degrees goes so remember negative angles are clockwise from the positive x direction and we know that b has a magnitude of five and we want to add these two things together which is why i've drawn my two vectors head to tail as usual we know the vector sum should look something like that the vector from the start of the chain to the end of it. Okay, so let's go ahead. I mean, I haven't drawn my vector to scale, so it's not going to be quite right. Um, but let's go ahead and do the calculation and find our sum in component form and then in magnitude angle form, just to sort of tie all these calculations together. So a plus if, I, if I'm doing the calculation a plus b, let's write it as magnitude cos angle magnitude sine angle, that's A. In fact, A should be green, shouldn't it? Let's make it green. Um, plus B was blue. Um, so B is going to be magnitude 5, cosine of angle, magnitude of 5. Oh, I should have put those in as 4, shouldn't I? Magnitude of 5, cos uh, sine, negative 135. Now we can just use our normal vector addition, which is just to add those numbers together. So that equals 4 cos 30 degrees plus 5 cos negative 135 degrees for the first component and 4 sine 30 degrees plus 5 sine negative 135 degrees. And now I'd go to my calculator and do each one of those separately. So 4 cos 30 plus 5 cos negative 135 gives me quite a small, I'm just going to write like four decimal places, 0, 7, 1, 4 for my x component. For my y component, I'm going to type in 4 sine 30 plus 5 sine negative 135. The y component will be negative 1.5355. And that is my vector sum. So I'm just using my normal vector sum of adding the components together, and that gives me what that vector is. And you can see that my picture is not perfectly to scale, but it is going left by a little bit and down by a bit more. <laughs> All right, so now to find the magnitude and angle of this. So this is let's just call this equals C. This can be our new vector. So C is, so that what we want to do is we want to find the magnitude of C. 
all we've got to do is take the square root of those things. Now, if you're using a calculator, you'd include all of the decimal places here. Um, plus negative 1.5355 squared. Those negative signs will just square themselves away. So let's go zero, uh, so square root, open a bracket, 0 0.0714 squared plus 1.5 three five five squared close the bracket hit the equals button gives me a mag magnitude of one point five three seven two approximately and now if you've used the unrounded values here which would be the correct thing to do um, you might differ from what I've got here maybe in that last decimal place that's the magnitude um, and it's very similar to this y value it's because basically this x value is tiny, so the overall magnitude of the vector is pretty much entirely determined by this piece here. It's only you can see it's only slightly bigger. What about the angle? Well, the angle is going to be the inverse oops, tan of the y component divided by the x component. So those negative signs will cancel off and I can see that my x component is negative so this is going to give me the wrong answer <laughs> so that means I'm going to also subtract off 180 degrees if you prefer to add 180 degrees it's fine it gives you an, an equivalent answer so I'll type this into the calculator so remember this was because if the x component had been positive you would have left off the 180 degree bit so shift 10 for inverse 10, open a bracket, 1.5355 divided, I've cancelled off the negative signs in my head, divided by 0 0.0714, and it gives me an angle, uh, minus 180, gives me an angle of negative 92.7 degrees. Okay, so that means my angle here is just a little bit more than 90 degrees which makes sense and that's sort of consistent with my picture negative means clockwise so that also makes sense remember we're going from the positive x direction uh, there around clockwise so it's negative a little bit more than 90 degrees also makes sense all right that's all i want to say about adding vectors together you're going to use this a whole lot when you're working with forces um, because we're often going to want to take a problem and split it into looking at the x and y components separately so remember the x component is just the first one y component is just the second one some situations will often be the case that one of these will end up being zero for whatever reason cool see you next time